Our next speaker is uh, Venkatesh Prasad Bhatt. Apologies if I mispronounce it. And uh, he will talk about shipping Jira packages with uh, system images. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Venkatesh Prasad Bhatt with my co-presenter, uh, Yoris Krak. Uh, we both uh, ship our uh, product, Julia Sim at Julia Hub, using system images. So. We want to share our experience with why system, uh, system images have been great for us and also what can be done to get the best performance out of it and also how do we ensure that it is always relocatable or most of the time it is relocatable and all features are also available. Uh, so system images have been very reliable for us. You can throw sort of 100, 200 packages and still uh, it it just builds. Uh, it might take an hour or so uh, for installing all the artifacts and instantiating and everything and building. But once it is built, it is very readily shippable and that makes it highly scalable. And then when uh, on a target machine, when you just start it, uh, it doesn't pre-compile again. So it can be used right out of the box and giving the speed. Uh, and the environment is consistent for entire team. And if there is an error or if there is um, same feature being worked on, um, uh, you, uh, everybody has the same uh, set of features, so it is highly reproducible. Uh, and then if there are private packages, even code obfuscation can happen because you don't have to ship the source code, but that is pre-baked into the system image. Uh, and um, so to make sure that system image works on the target machine, what all do we ship? Uh, first of all, system image. Uh, you can either swap out the default um, uh, Julia system image, or you can also have a, a Julia file in lo user local bin, which uh, targets the system image. Uh, and a lot of packages in Julia do need artifacts at the initialization. So bundle in the artifacts as well. And uh, also uh, provide the TOML file. So project TOML and manifest TOML lets the user know uh, what system, uh, all the packages that are already in there and what he can use and the features he can actually uh, you know, expect there. And then include the packages. So um, Julia needs to know that what modules are there. So if there is a private package, so the trick is remove all the source code and have an empty module script. So it just needs to be that, and with that, uh, system image will just take care of the functionalities. And then for the registry part, you can either, uh, you can also add private registries, but at least add the general registry. Otherwise, package manager would install it the first time the system image is being used. And um, how do we go about building a system image that is mostly relocatable? So start with a dedicated depot whose target path matches, um, the uh, depot path should match the target machine. This uh, avoids all the requires errors uh, that you would get at the startup, uh, which would also hurt the uh, you know, startup time. And then set the CPU target. This is the one that Julia binaries are built with for the x86 architecture. Uh, this covers uh, most of the uh, CPU targets there, uh, there are. And then um, list out all the packages that you would, uh, you would need and you, you would expect your user to use with your package and also try, uh, try to cover all the primary dependencies of that so that it is more robust and you're covering most of the uh, user base. Uh, and then this will allow, when the system is started, you can import and use the package readily but this does not guarantee that functions are, uh, yeah, it doesn't pre-compile. So for that, you, you can pass a pre-compile file. This can be just as simple as passing the run tests, uh, the unit tests that are there, or you could also include a custom script which uh, you know, hits all the core functionality of your package. Uh, and then there are preferences. Uh, to, uh, there are preferences, Tomil sort of, um, CUDA currently uses preferences to set the Julia uh, CUDA version. And also, uh, ordinary DPQ and other packages have sort of toggles to decide uh, what needs to be pre-compiled while uh, the first time it is being pre-compiled. So for that, uh, preferences TOML is useful. And always avoid hard-coded file paths. If there is a hard-coded file path, then it is guaranteed that it will not work. But then, if it is unavoidable, then if, it, if the file size is small, you can use relocatable folders. Uh, if it is slightly larger, you can go with artifacts directly. And then lastly, if there are libraries that um, 
you cannot install on the target machine for some reason, then you can always find JLLs. So for most of the libraries, there are uh, JLLs available, and you can find uh, that they are versioned, and they automatically install everything within the artifacts depot. You just have to add that to uh, your library path. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, please. Um, in your experience, what's the easiest or best way to approach that you kind of make sure that you include everything pre-compiled? Because that can be hard. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, you can add the unit tests. So they usually uh, have the best coverage of the package already. So uh, that ensures that everything that you would expect user to use is already uh, you know, pre-compiled and baked in. So if I'm not 100% coverage, then I'm basically uh, yeah. problem. Uh, for those particular functions, it, uh, the first time it uh, you know, runs, yeah, that gets pre-compiled on the client. Everybody on the compiled source and not rely on coverage. It's also, it can get quite a pain, right? Because you have to run the test. So basically, means for us, for instance, we have to run the test of all of our dependencies, right? To get the manipulation working. So we're, a lot of the times, we even have to duplicate tests because they are very specific then to be running. They're used to be running in CI, that then doesn't work. So we have to basically are duplicating mm -hmm. or, or you have to make them such a generic that you can't run them in a different repository. It's like, oh, can we these? Which is, yeah, it's a lot of work. Any yeah. more questions from the audience? Yeah. Well, yeah, otherwise, I thought there might be um, some plans on on the composable system images because currently, you know, like you you want to build a thing and you have to you know not put everything into one thing. And if you you know maybe some part is, is more heavily developed than a different part. You still have to rebuild the entire thing anytime the most frequently updated package gets updated. So yeah. what are the sort of plans or timeline eventually on getting composable system images? Uh, yeah, so system images are usually if you already know that these package versions are you know well developed and you want to build on top of that, uh, you can lock in. So yeah, this does lock in all the features, but if you want to fle be flexible and you know if you're developing, I think PKG images uh, does the trick and. Uh, that that's not something uh, you can sh uh, you know you would want to ship because it does not lock in and it gives the flexibility. But yeah, if you are developing, I think that just uh, does the trick. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. If there are no questions, let's thank the speaker once again.